So every now and again, you've got to pack up and head out bush. So this week was that week. So this is a bit of a video of the week, what I got up to and what we saw. I was looking around the ruin, we hit the road and headed to the Mount Sandyman station boundary. There's a gate and a boundary that allows you access to the station. Always be careful when driving these roads, as station hands are going about their normal duties. On the way to our last ruin, an old shearing shed, we come across a really interesting guy, a dogger. He was baiting kangaroo meat to control the wild dogs in the area that take stock. After visiting the shearing shed, we continued on to the Mount Sandyman station homestead and talked to the owners for about an hour then continue on our way to the main west side and Honeycomb Gorge. So we just Got talking to this guy, he's a um, kangaroo shooter and he's yeah, been talking to him for a while, he's got an old car and kangaroos hanging off of it. Um, he baits dogs and just lives out here baiting dogs. He's actually got a buggered spring, he cracked a spring on that but he reckons it'll go for months. Interesting old fella, some interesting characters out here. Stop, to have a look at the ruins and when we got here, there's a giant dozer. Jen said maybe there's someone living in this caravan. I don't know. And this is an ancient or an old shearing shed. So there's all the <coughs> where they put the different classes of wool. The roof's all a bit old. So this would be the shearing floor with the, the old heads up there. So this is the residence or a house has the oven, the stove. So there's some living quarters there. And then over here must have been the laundry and the uh, bathroom because there's some troughs. And over here some pretty wicked basins. Have a look at that with a plug in there and everything and they're just made out of 44 gallon drums full of concrete. Another little residence. So this would have been where the shearers had dinner on these tables with benches.
So we're on the main road heading down to Honeycomb, um, out of the four-wheel drive tracks. We went past Mount Sandyman Station, called in there and caught up with the the owners. Um, yeah, really interesting characters. I uh, talked to, um, must have been the, I guess it's a husband and wife team, um, the wife. Um, yeah, interesting characters out this way, I must say. And uh, yeah, had a good chat. As it turned out that she was related to someone I know. So uh, heading down to Honey Honeycomb Gorge or one of the gorges down here um, to camp. Because I think it's a um, nice spot to camp. So we'll camp there for the night. And then in the morning we'll check out this side of the of uh, Kennedy Range. The gorges on this side and then head south to um, Murchison and then cut through a station to um, to the main highway and Calberry is the plan. And so this is gonna be home for the night and it doesn't get much better than this. We got set up, settled in for the night, had some dinner and got ready for an early start in the morning to check out this side of the range. So we've packed up, I'm going to head off to have a look at the range on this side. Now here is Honeycomb Gorge and as you'll see by the rock formations where it gets its name from.
Okay, so now we're going to head back out of Honeycomb Gorge. Very interesting rock structures there, and that would be magnificent to see in the wet. I'm not sure how often it flows or for how long, but it would be impressive. So we'll uh, walk back out of here and uh, see you back in the car. We left Honeycomb Gorge and headed for Gascoigne Junction and we come across one road that had some really interesting history. So this is the cobbled road. These roads were made <clears throat> back in the 20s um, for transportation, for trucks, so they could get through some of the, the worst areas. Um, and it's still here today. So you imagine cobbling a road like this for thousands of kilometres. It would have been uh, pretty tough going. Not far along from the cobbled road was the entrance to an old ruin we'd found on the map. We decided to drive in and take a look. It took a little bit of finding it, but in the end we found some of the junk and got out to take a look. So we've just found the ruins, we're just looking for it, and we found it scattered throughout the bush at this old station site, so we're going to hop out and uh, take a look. Here we headed to Gascoigne Junction with the intention of calling to a few sites on the way to Murchison. From Murchison through the back of the station country to Calberry turnoff, and Calberry was where we were going to spend the night. So this is a spot where you can find fossils, marine fossils, miles inland. So we're just going to go and take a look and well, I'm just going to go and take a look and see if I can find them where they are. So I'm still walking around looking for these fossils. Ah, I might have found something. Okay, so there's some little fossils in that rock. So once you know what you're looking for, all these wider rocks have all got little shells embedded in them. Okay, so that is fossils. Pretty interesting to think that this was sea floor millions of years ago. No, 
so we'll climb down and uh, see what's there. So imagine that the war that the river comes over the top of that and this is also a waterfall. Can you just listen to the birds in the silence? This looks very similar to that Mookerite from the Mooka station. I'm not sure if it is, but it looks very similar. This would have to be one of the best campsites that I have come across. It's like 10 degrees cooler down here, there's water, it's sheltered. It's uh, unbelievable. This will definitely be on the list as a campsite to uh, come back to. So I decided to get up the tree like a parrot. Get a parrot's eye view. After exploring the Billung Pool for an hour, we headed south. Our next point of interest was the Murchison Town site but not before we passed and explored an old stock well. So this is an old stock well on the, on the um, stock route for watering. It's got the old fence around it still. So I winched up a bucket full of water. One bucket didn't go far. Just a little bit of a stain in the bottom. Okay, interesting. Things you find. I think that they used to cut the wool around on the stations. There's just one parked up here. We'll have a look at see what's quickly at this museum. Camel cart used for wool carting. 18 camels or 12 horses. It's a lot of camels and horses. That would have been damn hard work. Just stopped to have a quick little look at this museum at Murchison. So all sorts of little trinkets that's been collected from out and about. After exploring the Murchison Museum and Townsite for a couple of hours, we headed south for a short time where we turned right and used one of the back roads to get to the coast and eventually Calberry. 
Thank you for taking the time of watching the series. It definitely makes dragging the camera equipment and the hours of editing to put these things together worthwhile. I have another week of holidays in the middle of November and that trip is going to be a real interesting one. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. So until then, I'll catch you all later. So the sun's just going down and we're heading to Kalbarri and there's a few roos on this road so I'll show you the difference between with and so that's uh, spotlights and light bar and that's just high beam and that's low beam high beam spotlights so as you can see and everyone would attest to that uh, driving at this time of the night or at night out here having powerful lights is a necessity so you can see those kangaroos well before you get near them and you can slow right down